Hello everyone, hey welcome to another episode of The Front tonight. It's Wednesday night, which means it's time for us to have another live leadership lesson. I am so excited, I'm interviewing a absolutely fantastic, just amazing individual. He's a living legend in the automotive industry. So uh, I'll, I'll get to that here in just a moment. Couple quick reminders. If you want some sales training tips, you want some inspiration, some motivation, you wanna level up your leadership, check out my website at leadtheteam.net. I've got several hundred videos and blogs of, uh, of episodes that are real similar to this one. You can check out the YouTube channel. I would ask that, you know, please make sure you subscribe there. I do normally about two videos a week. Wednesdays, I do the live leadership lessons here. And then Sundays, I do a recorded episode. And that's usually a little bit more mechanical, five to 10, 15 minutes, something like that. So I would love for you to take the time to tune in and join me. So I am going to be getting with my very special guest, Mr. Jim Ziegler, the alpha dog, right after this. Thanks for tuning in to Lead the Teams, the front. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you're the first to know about new episodes, uploads, and when I go live. Yes, and we are live right now. Just to my left right there is Mr. Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog. Jim, how are you doing this evening? I'm having the best day of my entire life. Well, that makes me feel really good. They, th thank you for that. That's fantastic. I'm glad. Uh, I'm, in, oh, I'm anticipating a better day tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> knock me right down real quick there. I, I was going to say it's because, uh, you know, uh, Debbie already has made dinner and you, you got to enjoy that. So that's, she's fantastic. I know, you know. So, Jim, do me a favor. If you would just give the viewers, because I, you know, this touches a lot of different people in business and leadership and in different areas. If you would just give a brief history, kind of of who you are, what you do, a uh, little bit of your business and automotive background. Oh gosh, how much time do we have? Well, uh, I you, you take as much time as you need. A couple minutes. <laughs> I'll leave it I've, I've been in the I've been in the automobile industry for forty two years. I would. I was a DJ before that. I was a radio advertising salesperson. I've been a manager and uh, set records in the car business and um, spoke at 14 NADA conventions and been the keynote speaker for 98 state dealer conventions. Um, write for three magazines. And uh, other than that, I don't do too much at all, Mike. That's where I said if I mess up and I forget to turn my mic back on. <laughs> we were okay, talking wait, before. Turn your mic back on, Mike. Yeah, hey, you could just remind me. You, you've been in radio broadcast. I've done this once or twice. Sorry, I was sitting clicking the button and it wouldn't come on. So, so Even yeah, worse, yeah. even worse is leaving the mic open. Oh, yeah. Well, and, I've heard you tell a story about leaving the mic open. That's a perfect segue. Didn't you have a speaker at one of your events leave a mic open during a, during a break? Well, it was me. Was it you? I don't know which. I don't know I, which story you're talking about. Oh, I've heard um, several from you. <laughs> you've got a lot. The worst of all is when I went to the men's room wearing a live mic. Oh yeah, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> I entertained the entire room. I'm I'm sure. So hey, as we're getting in tonight and we're talking about leadership, your your forte, one of the things I know you've always prided yourself on is that high level executive level management, yes? Yeah, it's intensity. Okay. I, I, we'll I, 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 I came I came to win. I when I show up to the game, I got that brown black stuff under my eyes. I I am ready to play. I, I didn't come to play, I came to win. And you're still actively training in stores too, right now, aren't you? We were just talking beforehand that not not only yeah, are you. I'll, I'll be at Billy Navarre Chevrolet in Lake Charles, Louisiana, training and working deals next week. And so, um, I desk deal. I've desk deals in forty nine states. I've actually interacted with customers in car dealerships every state except Alaska. I've done finance. I've done sales. I've interacted with consumers in all the states so that's a lot of travel uh, no I, absolutely i know you you've uh gosh it's been a number of years you should come back to to denver or colorado springs you could come into colorado springs but i that was when you and i met gosh has to be 
15 or years. Or me in Denver at the end of March. Oh, yeah? What? I'm, the, I'm the keynote speaker for the um, Dealer Summit. IDS? Colorado Dealer. Okay. Well, I'll see you up there this year then. So here's a couple of things as, as we're diving in here. If there was a single thing, because I know you have so many different facets and there are so many different pieces to Jim. If you could narrow it down to say, well, what th this is the one thing that Jim Ziegler is most known for, what would you say that is? Or what would you want it to be? What do you want your legacy to be, Jim? I want my, my legacy to be that I helped a lot of other people. If you look at, look in our industry, there are so many people that I have given a leg up. I've helped them. Mm -hmm. I've, I've boosted their careers. I've, I've brought them out to the national stage. Um, so many people that I trained when they were salespeople that are now dealer principals. They own the business. Right. You know, I look at the legacy that, that I've left in this business. That that's I'm in my legacy years. It's important right now that. 20 years now, somebody says, do you remember Jim Ziegler? Yeah, he was a great guy. Well, he helped a lot of people. You know, I, I don't need money. I, I'm still actively working. We're producing conferences. I'm going into dealerships. I'm producing uh, on-demand videos. It's, you know, I, I have enough money. I could have I could have retired years ago. But I'm in the legacy part of my, my career right now. I'm in a part of my career right now where, where am I going to leave this industry? Sure. How am I going to be thought of 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Well, people still remember what I contributed. I hope that makes sense, Mike. A hundred percent. And I'm, I, I can tell you, at least from my perspective, uh, I, I'm genuine in what I was saying when I was introducing you. Like, you're a living legend to me. I know you, uh, the, the Prosperity Equation uh, book or CD, I think I have a book and a CD of it that you wrote, I know, a number of years ago. And, uh, you know, I've been to your conferences uh, for, for I can speak for myself. And I know so many people out there that you have made such a significant impact, not just on them, but you, you've uh, certainly helped to evolve the auto industry in many ways. I think one of the things that's really unique. Well, you know, you, <laughs> one of the things that is so unique is you've been in the business for a really long time. And you, you've said this, so I hope I don't steal your thunder. You not only have helped evolve the industry, but you are still evolving with the industry. I mean, you're training, you, you've said it before, you're training technology to the next, the, the next generation of, of automotive professionals, yes? Amazing, when I stand on stage and I'm, I'm teaching young people internet skills, uh, <laughs> you know, technology, marketing, People right. look at me like, he's not supposed to know that. I've had to reinvent myself so many times and retrain so many times. You know, I've been in this, this industry for four decades, and there's been a lot of evolution. Sure. And it, it, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. People say, Jim, have you seen this clothes or this technique? And I'll look at them and say, I invented that. They look at me like, yeah, sure you did. No, I did. <laughs> no, no, really. So much <laughs> of my stuff. So much of my stuff has become standard practice that people don't know who, who invented it anymore. That happens a lot throughout the industry. I think the, the interesting, you know, we use uh, Promax as a CRM and you, and you are certainly credited with many things in that system. You, you've got your name on some of the presentation <laughs> stuff, which I think is really cool. Promax, Promax and I have such a history. Mm -hmm. John Palmer just recently sold Promax. Yep. And when John Palmer was the manager at Moline Chevrolet in, in uh, Quad Cities, he was my student. He was coming to my sales manager seminars. He was the general manager of Mills che Mill Chevrolet in Moline. And he came to me and he said, Jim, I've invented this special finance program, this CRM program. I want to show it to you. I said, well, listen, John, I don't do hard product. He said, no, you got to see it. So he flew down to Atlanta when I was doing a seminar and presented it to me on a laptop. And it was all my stuff. <laughs> yeah. was, he put my stuff in, in his system. And I started doing seminars and promoting him, and I put him on the map. We, we were friends to the day he sold the, the business. I guess we're still friends. I can't say we were friends, but you know, we were actively friends until he sold the company. Sure. No, I, yeah, and we, 
I I still see that to this day, be, knowing you being so integrated that with them myself on many things that it, it's, I think that's one of those things that's really cool. Hey, I, as a side note here really quick, there's a few people, Ryan Girardi's over on the YouTube channel. He said, hey, make sure that uh, to tell you that he says H-E-L-L-O, and uh, he says he was always impressed by the fact that when you were up on stage presenting and you were talking about when you were talking about as as a uh, an evolution of the car business using Pinterest in automotive and sharing sharing inventory and so forth. So I think that's cool. Uh, we got Andrea uh, Lopes. We've got Chris Wood, Jamie Schroeder. Frank Crossan. Frank uh, worked for, for me for a number of years. He's awesome, Un unbelievable individual. Uh, Brian, Brittany, James Steele. James, James Steele says, says what's up. So thank you everybody for, for tuning in. <clears throat> so- Yeah, I'm looking at all those. I'm looking at my others. I've got three screens on this computer. Yeah, a lot of people here. Yeah. De Deshaun Mobley just popped um, in. Steele? Yeah. This is cr incredible. Yeah, um, Ryan was talking about Pinterest. Pinterest is a phenomenal social media that very few people know how to use. Right. I mean, it, every time you, you get repinned on Pinterest, it moves your URL to another location. And right. all of a sudden, you're all over the Internet. I personally, I can tell you, you know, doing YouTube and some of the other things here that, that I do, I haven't quite figured out Pinterest. We're going to have to set up a conference call afterwards. No, I mean, I, I figured some of it out, but just the philosophy behind it. I've even asked people like, hey, does it really work? Is it working? But I, I think you're saying, yes, it does. It's, so, It's not just recipes and and your, your pattern designs. It's That's the way it started out. Is now, I've got boards up there for my King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. I've got boards up there for... For internet battle plan, you know my 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 internet conference, yeah. and I've got boards that are visited, you know, seventy five, eighty times a week, and That's people crazy. are reposting those pictures. And every That's time they repost those pictures, my URL goes with it, because so I've got the URL embedded in, in the pictures. Right. So then you get free backlinks, and it makes it more relevance. I can see how that would work. That's awesome. So. Let me ask you a question. As far as, uh, do you see management and leadership as the same thing, Jim? Uh, no. Okay, and why so, not? Uh, a, sales man, a sales manager, a general sales manager, a dealer principal, they wear three hats. Okay. They're a manager, a leader, and a supervisor. There, there's, there's three things that any manager needs to do. First of all, I'm a supervisor. Okay. I'm responsible for the activities of the people that work for me. And I appreciate that you've been a salesperson for 25 years. When the decision is made, your input is very valuable to me. But I will make the decision, and that's what we will do. I am the supervisor. Okay. Uh, Roadhouse, I'm the cooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the cooler. Uh, the manager physically manages the day-to-day -day operation displays the cars, you know, audits the time cards. You know, that's management. That is management. It's the physical duties. Okay. And then leadership is the inspirational part of the business. Do the people want to follow you? And a lot of a lot of people get leadership confused with being well liked. I agree. When I'm a, when I'm a manager, I tell my my employees. Liking me is optional. Respecting me is part of your job description. I am in charge, and I've got people that will follow me anywhere because my job as a manager, as a leader, as a supervisor, my job is to cause them to make a good living, to take home to their families and the people they care about. Managers don't understand your position is to cause them to have a better life because they work for X Chevrolet, X Toyota. Because they work for the dealership, I have to be sure that they have a better life to take home for their family, the people they care about. My job is not to be a soft manager. My job is to be, I want to put them under a lot of stress. When, when people work for me, I will push you to the outer limits of your possibilities and capabilities. I will make you better than you thought you could be. 
know, I'm going to absolutely advance you. Part of what I do is elevate the people that work for, work with me if you want to be semantic about it. Sure. Does that make sense, Mike? A hundred percent. I think that's I think that's fantastic. So when you're talking those levels, leader, no, I, I don't want to call them levels necessarily, but you have leader, manager, supervisor. They all have different duties, facets, different facets. tasks, different facets. facets. I love that word. I use it all the time. Uh, so <laughs> do you end up sometimes, just from your perspective, is there uh, a time and place for somebody to be all three of those things? Is there a time and a place for someone to be individual points of that things like should i have a supervisor a manager a leader or am i looking for somebody especially if you're you're looking at someone coming up in any business if they're coming up in a business and they're saying gosh i want the manager title or i yeah i want to be a supervisor of people or i want to be a leader you know you have people coming up that they have they they chase the title they chase the view right so that's the problem with the business today or any business. I don't care if it's real estate, I don't care if it's selling automobiles, I don't care what business it is. There are people in today's generation, I'm not going to characterize and box millennials in, you know, <laughs> there are people that when they apply for a job today, their, their whole priority is how much time off do I get? When do I get to be a supervisor? And, you know, they, they don't want to pay their dues, they don't want to go and learn the process. They, they feel superior to the process walking in. And, you know, my, my generation, we were a tough generation. Some some people today, you need to build them a little blanket for it in the showroom and, and do puppy therapy. I I don't think that should happen. You, you're saying they should do that. I absolutely disagree with that. There is no reason we should have blanket forts and puppy therapy. <laughs> So, so <laughs> I'm just going to let everybody take that in for a minute. Uh, so when we're talking about... I crack myself up. You know. I know you, you crack me up too and many other people. Uh, and if you can't entertain yourself, you're not going to entertain, entertain other people, right? Uh, the, yeah. So what would you say from a leadership perspective, either leaders or managers, maybe supervisors, what are the most important decisions that you feel? And I think you're going to give me three different verticals here, knowing you. But if they're all the same, you know, what are the what are the most important decisions you would say those people make on a daily basis? Wow, what, is, what a loaded question that is. What what decisions do leaders and supervisors make? Well, the most difficult decision is advancement of an employee, termination of an employee. Um, reprimand of an employee, praise of an employee. I mean, you know, there are people working at dealerships that absolutely should not be there. And that's the one part of management and supervision that people don't want to deal with. Absolutely, I agree with you. And, when, you know, when I go to dealership, the first thing I say is, is there anybody here that really shouldn't be here? And the managers in a quiet meeting will say, well, this person here, this person here, let me ask you, are they... Are they educatable? Are they elevatable? Can can we bring them up to our level? Oh no, that person's never going to come up to our level. They have an attitude, or whatever. Get rid of bad attitudes. When I when I ran my own company with forty employees, mm -hmm. same company I have now, but early on we had forty employees and six thousand square feet of offices. The sign over my door read. A bad attitude is grounds for termination. Do not bring a bad attitude into this office. And, you know, mon monitoring an attitude, which is an infection. When you've got a bad attitude in the dealership, it spreads. And regardless of production, I will, I will terminate a bad attitude. I 100% agree with you on that also. I think you and I are in alignment. I've seen some conversations on Facebook. You've probably seen some of these similar conversations where the, uh, some people are asking the question, they're saying, look, whose responsibility is it? Is it the, call it manager or leader, is it the manager's responsibility? If you have somebody that's underperforming or you don't feel they're in the right place, is it the manager's responsibility to bring them up or is it the salesperson's responsibility to bring themselves up? What's your opinion on that? I have four E's in Ziglarism. Okay. Four. Okay. 
evaluate. Okay. You can't you can't change what you cannot measure. If I can't measure somebody's performance, if I can't, and we the CRM is a wonderful tool. All the all the information's in the CRM if you put the information in the CRM. So first of all, when I run the dealership, the CRM rules the dealership. Yeah, you know, we're going to have the information in the CRM. And we're going to use the information. So very important that I evaluate. Okay. Then I'm going to educate. You can't expect people to do what you never taught them. Man, that so is we're going to educate. And we're going to elevate. We're going to make every effort to bring that person up to the dealership standard or my standard, you know, whatever we expect. You cannot terminate somebody that you didn't educate and attempt to elevate. There are people that will not be educated. There are people that will not be elevated. There are people that want to self-manage regardless. They can't stay here. The fourth E of Zigglerism is exterminate. You know, so I've got evaluate, educate, elevate, or exterminate. And, of course, elevate and educate come before exterminate. Sure. And did you ever watch Gunsmoke when you were a kid? Oh, gosh, I've seen it a few times. I wouldn't say I watched it consistently, but I, yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. My generation, maybe, but yeah. Gunsmoke had a character named Festus okay. hung around the marshal. Okay. And Festus said it best. You have to fire everybody? No. Festus was sitting out by, by the marshal's office. The gas lights were, were going, and the crickets were chirping, and he had his arms crossed. He leaned his chair back up against the wall, and he says, Matthew, did you ever notice the town gets real quiet after a hanging? Uh, <laughs> you don't have to fire everybody. <laughs> no. Yeah, sometimes. Well, and it, it is that that's it's something that's necessary sometimes. Uh, not the hanging. <laughs> not, not the hanging. <laughs> not well, uh, right. Well, that's a that that was a use of Yeah, no. You know? I, I understand. You, you know, you, You've got that one employee in every company, whether it's an automobile dealership or any business, that feels they are bulletproof and invisible. You know, no one. And they'll tell you right now, look, look, let me tell you about my production. I will terminate that individual and make a statement. When, when they're, I, I go in dealerships and when I go to a car dealer, I will shut the door on a car deal and I say, what the hell are you thinking? What are you thinking? And nobody does that. I mean, they're paying me to tell them the truth. They're not paying me. And I say, you're protecting this person who is ruining the rest of the people. They didn't pay you for well, the Jim, unicorns he, and rainbows. He sells 25 cars a month. Well, here's a glass of water. And here's my here's you in the in the in the dealership, and, and when I pull it out, there's the hole you leave. <laughs> That's a pretty good analogy. Absolutely, I've, I've heard that, that before. Meeting before. Okay, this glass of water is the dealership. My finger is you. Here's you in the dealership. When I pull it out, there's the hole you leave. That, that's a really good analogy. Hey, we got a few more people coming in real quick. I think, James, I saw a few people go by also. And, and Lily I Williams. Lily Williams. Today, today, today. I, I love that guy. He's always upbeat. Lily, a uh, conservative dresser. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think every, very conservative. I think they should model a, uh, a dealership dress code after him. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> So, so let me ask you, after the number of years that you've been in, wh who are a few people when you first got into, you, you got into the car business uh, very, very young, I imagine, yes? So when you yeah, got into- 1973. The, okay, so when you got into the car business, who are some people that had the most impact on your life? Who, who had the biggest impact, either leaders, mentors, managers, that uh, you would still remember to this day and why? Jackie B. Cooper. Okay, that's a good one. Jack, B, Jackie B. Cooper was the ultimate sales trainer before Grant Cardone, before me, before Joe Verde, before any of us. And I, I had the pleasure to know Jackie B. Cooper. 
I had the pleasure to interact with him. I, I, I spoke with him on the phone. We visited in my office. I, I knew Jackie very well. We were friends. We weren't like stayed at each other's house friends, but we were good friends. Sure. And Jackie B. Cooper was the pioneer for sales training. You know, he, he was the, the forerunner of Grant Cardone, Ziegler, Verdi, all of, all of us that reached the national level. And um, Jackie and I interacted a lot. One thing I learned from Jackie was when Jackie passed away, he was still teaching out of the same book. He didn't grow with the times. And okay. that is one decision I made when I got into this business. He was my influence. That I would totally evolve. You know, I, I had income producing websites in 1996. I was I was on AOL and I'm still on AOL. People criticize me. I know you me. are. <laughs> I, had, I, had that, I had that AOL account now. I've got Gmail. I've got Yahoo. I've got every one of my domains has its own email address, but I still use my AOL address because I've had it since 1996, seven, somewhere in there. You know, yeah. I remember when I used to get on AOL to go. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I, I remember. You've and, got well, mail. <laughs> yeah, you've got mail. And and it, it was just the like. The little guy running across the screen. Uh-huh. And you remember before that, here's the thing, like like prior to that, that was the exciting thing when you actually went to the mailbox. So that was a highlight. Once you got logged in, you've got mail. It was like, yes. Someone acknowledged me today. How fun! And I do know that ab about you because we've exchanged emails and such. And it is funny. You can tell how someone's been, how long someone has been involved in technology based on if they have an AOL email address, they've been doing it for a while. One of one of our uh, our store managers, one of our store managers, he's been in the the automotive industry for about about forty years. And his primary his primary address, man, he's got an AOL address. Still AOL. works. <clears throat> So, so let me uh, kind of as we're as we're we're moving along towards the the tail end here, moving through. Hey, Damien, Damien Boudreau just popped over here. How you doing, man? Oh, uh, uh, in the Damien Boudreau. Yeah, Asian guy. Yeah, I tell all sorts of Boudreau and Thibodeau jokes. <laughs> Boudreau Thibodeau <laughs> jokes. Oh yeah, you you had to be in Louisiana to know about Boudreau and Thibodeau. Okay, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Maybe that's when we can yeah. sidebar later. I've done a lot of work in New Orleans, in Louisiana in general. So let me ask you, uh, El Patron, there he is. How you doing, man? Uh, hey, Rudy. Real, real quick, what, so, so just a moment ago, you're talking, hey, 1973, that's when I got in. You talked about constant evolution. That's one of the things that I think is interesting that it's one of those pieces that you picked up and learned kind of had him as a mentor maybe inadvertently because you said hey he didn't evolve so fast forward here we are in 2018 headed into you know 20 or i guess we're 2019 now headed into 2020 i'm losing my dates man i don't even know the date uh what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that today's leaders especially in automotive are facing are coming at them in 2019 there's a lot of people right now plotting the dealer apocalypse. There's a, a lot, a lot of our vendors we're paying money to. They're, they're, have you noticed a lot of our vendors lately are referring to us as the dealership model? The, that's an interesting spin. Yeah, the dealership model. That is How many times is, have you had Cars.com or Auto Trader or any of these people? Oh, and the, in the dealership model, as if there are other models that they intend to replace us with. That's bear, an bear in mind, we got vendors actively working for our apocalypse. I mean, that I <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. The, that's one of the reasons, we, you know, we're not. I, I don't think we're on any of those. We work with one who will remain unnamed at the moment. But that's that was one of my frustrations early on getting into the digital stuff with Auto Trader and Cars.com. You brought them up. We're paying them for the service to advertise our cars against us. They're advertising our cars and competitors' cars against us on the search engines. I have often said the internet is the worst thing that ever happened to the car business. People say, Ziggler, old school. No, new school. Let me tell you. We 
would not sell any less cars if there were no internet. We're only going to sell so many cars. With or without the internet, we're going to sell 70 million cars a year, new and used. Sure. All the internet did was put a bunch of vendors between us and the consumer out, out Googling us and renting our ups back to us <laughs> and reducing our profit and taking what's left. <laughs> In almost every instance, I would agree with you. And, and the, you know, when we're talking about it, I think, I think it's interesting that you say, Hey, if there wasn't, if there wasn't an internet, you could say, and there are some people, both both schools, you're saying, hey, it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Some people say it's the best thing that's ever happened. Oh, it's a necessary evil. Oh, it's the, you know, everybody has a different perspective on it. Necessary think, evil. But what is good about the internet, it redistributes mm -hmm. who gets the deals. The better players mm -hmm. take the deals away from the poorer players. Absolutely. So it's my job to teach the better players how to take the deals away from the also rands. Away from the what? Grow or die. My job is to teach the stronger dealers to take the deals away from the weaker dealers on the internet. The internet just redistributes who gets the business. And a little rural dealer, a little dealer out in the country, could come under the radar screen and mm -hmm. take that business away from a Goliath in the, in the urban markets. I mean, that's what's so cool about the internet. Sure. First thing about the internet, it did not create the sale of one additional vehicle that wouldn't have been sold anyway. It, I yeah. told Dale Pollack that the only time I ever met him, the, the V Auto guy, Dale Pollack, yeah. I said, the fallacy in your principle is you cannot go in the men's room and poop out some additional customers. There's only so many in the market. Yeah, the market is the market. Yeah, the market is the market. <laughs> so. <clears throat> So I, I think that's an interesting perspective when you're, you know, we're talking about it. I, and I do. I think in most cases, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that that is definitely a challenge that's that's entered in that we didn't have. You didn't have that same level of difficulty with with, uh, you know, newspaper ads. You didn't have the same level of difficulty with, with and distribution that you did with with radio, any sort of traditional advertising. I don't think newspaper is still very valuable. If you're training a puppy. <laughs> Just let that sink in, folks. See, newspaper newspaper still has its place in everyone's life. Just remember that. You heard it here first from Jim. <laughs> hey, so as as we're winding down kind of here to the end, do me a favor. What what are some resources? Because you're ever evolving. What are some of the resources that you use? What are some resources that you'd recommend to somebody? that's coming up, especially if they want more insight as a manager and a leader. We were talking beforehand, you are in fact one of the only, at least in automotive that we know of and, are, and so forth, you're one of the only trainers that previously was a general manager, yes? I was a general sales manager. General sales manager, Never okay. achieved general manager. Okay. But I'm the only national trainer that's ever been at that level, that has re reached national acclaim. Um, sure. Matter of fact, I'm the only one that's actually been a manager of any kind. You know, other than Mark, Mark Tort, all the other trainers, and, and not that they're not great trainers. Sure. When you're talking Grant Cardone, Joe Verde, they were not managers. They were salespeople. They were good salespeople. But I trained from a man. I'm a management trainer. I don't call myself a sales trainer. Sure. I train dealers how to be dealers. I, I teach managers how to be managers. That's that's my my niche. I I am a, above that level. I also train salespeople as part of what I do when I'm in a dealership. But I am a management and process trainer because I'm qualified to do that. Absolutely. So so what are some what are some resources that you're using uh, for yourself to? Uh, sorry, I think I got us on a tangent there. But what are some resources that you're using for continual training for yourself? Or what would you recommend for other people that do want to get into that that management? You, you know, Mike, I don't want to go there on this broadcast. I'll tell you why. Okay, sure. Because I have financial relationships with a lot of vendors that sponsor my events. And you know, it wouldn't be fair for me to just lean toward one vendor that I'm receiving income from. That makes sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. That's but absolutely I, fair. I when I, when I recommend a vendor to a dealer, I will tell a dealer, look, I'm financially involved in this deal. You know, if, if I am financially involved, I will disclose that when I recommend that vendor. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say I use this resource or that resource because I'm biased. I, I respect that. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So, um, well, there are, there are vendors out there that don't disclose their bias. I agree and, with that too. And they're taking big money from these vendors and then acting like they're a research company and they're not a research company. They're, they're taking money under the table for the vendors they're recommending. I will not do that. That no, I think that's fantastic. And, and the fact that you're transparent about it, the tra I know that's a buzzword. <laughs> but the fact that you're transparent about it. Oh, hey. oh, oh you ever see the movie you ever see the movie Home Alone? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Macaulay Culkin? Uh-huh. Oh, you look just like him. There you go. <laughs> hey, so uh I, I got two last questions for you, Jim. One yeah. is uh, obviously in, in any vertical of business, whether it be automotive, real estate, uh you know, any sales venue, uh being the CEO of a corporation whatever avenue that somebody is approaching, obviously passion is a really big deal in business. You gotta be lit up. You have to be fired up about what it is that you do, what it is that you wanna do on a, on a daily basis and where you wanna grow to. And so obviously being in the number of years that, that you are, and this goes back to kind of the beginning of our conversation, you're very passionate about the automotive business. Why not? Uh, hey, no, I'm I, not saying. I, I, I care about you. I mean, understand this. I will not hurt you if I cannot help you. There are people in our business today that internet trolls that just go around attacking people. And, you know, I, 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 I can't stand that it's because I have no envy. No envy whatsoever. I want you, Mike Phillips, to be better, bigger, more wealthy than I am. Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone has surpassed me financially by a uh, you know, way out. There. But you know what? I admire him and I respect him and I, I, I absolutely celebrate his success. You know, I have no envy. I don't want anything you have. I might want something like what you have, but I don't want yours. Sure. And I will not try to elevate myself by bringing you down, which is seems to be the theme of all these self-proclaimed internet gurus today. I they're, would say they're more that, involved in bringing other people down to raise themselves up. I think that's been a, a theme for, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially it depends on, on perspective, on, on where you get to in any industry. I think that becomes a heavy theme. So uh, at the, uh, how, how can people contact you, Jim? Kind of, do you have any closing uh -huh. thoughts, anything you want? I know you're going to give us every way and they can Google you too, but, uh, uh what, you know, any, any closing thoughts? I come thoughts up four and, and a half million times in Google. That's a lot of times. Four, and that really is me four and a half million times. I mean, we, if you can't find me, you are inept, but, um, my website is Ziegler super systems.com. Okay. Z I E G L E R I before E. And internetbattleplan.com. That's my internet conference coming up, Teach at the Beach, coming up March 4th and 5th in Clearwater, Florida. The internet conference, um, 20 speakers, 20 sponsors, two days, live band, cocktail reception, great food. Miss Debbie Ziegler does all the catering. It is going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. Internetbattleplan.com. Now, I've got early bird pricing right now at $250 a unit. If, if you want to attend my a unit, listen to that. If a you unit, want to attend person. Internet Battle Plan, $250 a person, McCullough and Calkin. Oh, that's incredible. And, and dealer principals and general managers, no charge. Website, internetbattleplan.com. That, that's the message. And I will tell you, I've been to, uh, I went to a recent battle plan here. Was it, I, was it the last one or the one before that? Detroit? That you went to Detroit. Detroit, yeah. Was that, that was the last one, correct? Point Greek Town Casino in Detroit. Yes, which uh, you put on an absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic show. The, the um, just upper echelon of service, of the people that are, are presenting and everything. 
absolutely fantastic. So for the people that are watching, I can tell you, I've been there. I've been connected with Jim for a number of years, but your your uh, internet battle plan conferences, bar none, they're, they are uh, just the some of the best I've ever been to. They're awesome. So thank you. Technology marketing is where it's at. Absolutely. That, so, the website's the showroom. Google's the weapon. 100%. So, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time to to join me today, share with the, the audience here, talk about uh, leadership and management and supervision and the things that we, we touched on. I really, really appreciate you. And uh, just hang tight for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take us out, okay? All right. And with that, thank you so much, everybody, for taking the time to tune in and join me and my guest, Jim Ziegler, here on this live leadership lesson from the front. Absolutely just a ton of wisdom and insight, a, a number of years of experience. And one of the coolest pieces that I take away from that is you've got to evolve. You've got to evolve or die. And Jim is constantly, he said it here, he's constantly reinventing himself. He's constantly you know, learning and, and recreating. And he's that guy. Here, here's the way I'll put it. He's still watching in the wings. Here's the way I'll put it. Jim is certainly still the guy. There's a difference between a trailblazer and a map maker. Jim's a trailblazer. He's that guy that's got a machete. He's out front cutting the path. And I know he will be just for gosh, uh, 20 years, 30 more years, 40 more years. That's the hope. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to tune in and join Jim and I today. I really, really appreciate you. Do me a favor. Remember, I do this every Wednesday and Sunday night. I'd love for you to tune in. You can check out more of the live leadership lessons at leadtheteam.tv. Also, if you are an automotive, I would encourage you, definitely check out Jim's internetbattleplan.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and join us. Look forward to seeing you again soon. See you back here. And until we speak next, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon, everybody.